वेलकम टू द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ मॉड्यूल सिक्स ऑफ मशीन एंड इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सो इन द थर्ड लेक्चर वी हैव लर्न अबाउट टू टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लो ट्रांसड्यूसर्स टू मोड्स ऑफ फ्लो ट्रांसड्यूसर्स वन एस वन वर्स अल्ट्रासोनिक फ्लो ट्रांसड्यूसर एंड द नेक्स्ट वर्स इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फ्लो ट्रांसड्यूसर सो बोथ ऑफ दीज फ्लो ट्रांसड्यूसर्स have their own advantages as as well as disadvantages so both will measure velocity of the fluid irrespective of viscosity reynolds number so all those are irrespective in the cases of both these flow transducers and uh, <clears throat> both will not cause any pressure head loss but thing is that both these are little bit costly ultrasonic sensors and receivers are costly and uh, the second one that is electro magnetic flow transducer is also costly because we have seen that the induced emf e is in the order of 10 raised to minus 8 volt so the voltage output is very small so we have to introduce several stages of instrumentation amplifier so that we'll get a significant voltage so that adds upon cost so that is why the second one is also costly and uh, one more thing is that one of the requirement of one of the requirement of electromagnetic flow sensor was the flowing liquid should be a conductor because we are considering that con a liquid as a conductor so the conducting fluid should be used so that is one essential uh, essential requirement for the electromagnetic flow transducer and another thing is that another very important advantage of that is that electromagnetic flow transducer can carry any corrosive liquids like acids alkalis or even slurries with pores as well as fine materials so that is the major advantage of electromagnetic flow transducer you can use any sort of liquid corrosive liquid you can measure the velocity of the flow so this was all about that flow transducers and today we we'll see a special kind of transducer a very famous transducer which is also included as one of the experiments in the measurements lab that is linear variable differential transducer so the word linear is very familiar to all so here the characteristics is linear the motion is linear we always we measure the linear displacement or we quantify the linear displacement then differential differential in the sense the output voltage is actually the difference of two voltages we'll see that okay so this is how we got this name linear variable differential transducer now we we'll see the basic construction of that that is we have we have a primary p1 and we have two sets of secondary winding that is so primary winding surrounds is wound on aluminum former so this is the primary winding and on the sides of the primary winding we have secondary winding which is divided into two stages that is s1 as well as s2 so this is actually the basic construction and in between we have a soft iron core and this soft iron core has an arm which will take the displacement or which will take the linear displacement so this arm will move the soft iron core between the primary and secondary winding either from left to right or from right to left so that is actually the linear displacement so we are trying to quantify or convert this linear displacement either from left to right or from right to left to an equivalent voltage so seeing that voltage we can actually know what is the linear dis what is the displacement and where is the linear displacement that is if it is moving to the left or if it is moving to the right we can know depending upon the magnitude of voltage we can know where is the displacement heading to that is if it is uh, moving towards the right or left okay so that is all about the basics of linear variable differential transducers and then we will see what is happening here that is now the primary voltage can be energized by a suitable supply ac supply because it's a transformer with 
a range of frequency from 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now, let the voltage, I told that there is, when we energize the primary, the secondary also gets its own voltage by the process of mutual induction. And the secondary, first part of the secondary winding S1, let the voltage induced be ES1 and likewise S2, let the induced voltage be ES2. So, this is the equivalent circuit of a linear variable transducer. See, so we have the primary, we have two parts of the secondary. You can see that one is the orientation of winding of one part is opposite of the opposite to that of the orientation of the next winding. That is, it is clear from the diagram here. That is, here we have the primary and we have two, two secondaries which is divided into two equal halves. But you can see that both are series wound in series, they are connected in series, that means the current flowing will be the same. But thing is that the direction of current is different. So the flux induced, orientation of flux induced in S1 as well as S2 will be opposite to each other. So the net voltage, net output voltage will be the difference between these two voltages that is ES1 minus ES2. So that induced voltage magnitude will depend on the position of the core. So that is why it is written like this, that is hence the output voltage of transducer is the difference of the two voltages. Uh, for the differential output voltage E0 is ES1 minus ES2. Now what happens when we have the core exactly at the middle position? So when we have the core at, at the middle position, you can see that equal number of turns or equal number of flux linkages are there for S1 as well as S2. As I already told that the output voltage is ES1 minus ES2. As there is equal flux linkages for both S1 and S2, the output voltage E0 will be equal to 0. It should be equal to 0. So that is the peculiarity of null, null point. That is, when the core is exactly at the center, center in the, center in the sense, the flux linkages of S1 and S2 should be the same. So in that case, we can say that the output voltage is 0. So, at that position of the core is called the null position or the normal position where we can see that ES1 is equal to ES2. So, this is equal to 0 at null position. So, what happens when we have the arm, when we have the arm moving towards the left, when, when the arm is moving towards the left in this direction, we can see that core is having less flux linkages with S2 and more flux linkages with S1. So ES1 will be definitely greater than ES2. So what happens when ES1 is greater than ES2? Obviously, the magnitude of voltage will be positive and high. So that increases in the positive direction. Now, similarly, what happens when we have the core moving from left to right? So when the core is moving from left to right, we can see that there is less flux linkages with S1 and more flux linkages with S2. So, you can see that when ES2, when ES2 is increasing and ES1 is going down, you can see that the magnitude of E0 decreases, that is, it goes to negative side. So, the negative voltage shows that the core is moving to the right side, whereas a positive voltage shows that the core is moving towards the left side. So, depending upon the position, the magnitude changes. So, when, while we see the magnitude itself, we can see that it is the orientation, that is the position of the core, whether it is moving towards the right or left. So, that is how we have the working of NVDT, very simple in operation. Now, we have, we will see the characteristics, that is, we will we'll, we'll see uh, three points. One, one, point is, one point is at the center, that is at O, and the other point is at A, that is at at the left left position and we have another point B at the right. Now we will see the voltage. See, we, 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 we were talking about the null point. So at the null point we have theoretically said that the output voltage is zero but output voltage practically it is not zero. We have a small voltage and that is due to the residual magnetism. So that residual magnetism is there and that voltage when, when we do the experiment is actually taken as the null voltage or the null point or the, the, the voltage corresponds to the null point. So 
when the core is at the center we have the residual voltage only the residual voltage and when we move the core towards the left that is towards the point a we can see that the magnitude of voltage increases linearly that is why we call it as a linear variable differential transducer linearly up to the point at the furthest furthermost leftmost point a beyond that you can see that non linear decreases in and the curve is no, no longer linear okay so this is how the voltage is generated the voltage in magnitude is positive and it is increasing in the positive direction and when we move the arm from left to right what happens is that there will be more flux linkages with s2 than s1 so that e0 the voltage e0 becomes more and more negative and will be increasing linearly in the negative direction and at till the the linear increase in the negative direction goes till the furthermost rightmost point b after that the non linearity creeps in so you can see that it is linear both in negative as well as positive direction only up to a certain point say a and b here so what about the flux uh, what about the phase you can see that the magnitude is positive when we move towards the left and it is negative when we move towards the right so positive voltage certainly shows that the phase difference is zero and negative sign shows that it is having a 180 degree phase shift okay so that is actually shown here that is when we move towards while we move towards uh, that is that is shown here that is while we move towards uh, the point b we have 180 degree out of phase and uh, when we move towards the right, left we will see that it is positive okay so you can see that these curves that is the voltage versus displacement curve is an even function whereas the phase versus core position is an old function that is very important so that is what is all about lvdt and its characteristics and we will see the advantages so there are several advantages main thing is that it is linear the characteristics is linear that is linearity we always expect linearity even though we have some non linearity in many many systems means many systems are non linear we approximate we make some valid approximations and make it linear so linearity is very important so here here is a main advantage of nvdt that is linear now we have another important capacitor that is infinite resolution what is resolution that is what is the output per steps so if the step change is very small then you can expect a very high resolution here you can see that there is no steps at all that is the movement towards the right or left is continuous no step that is stepless so if it is stepless then you can expect an infinite resolution that is one thing then you can expect very high output that is uh, there is no need for any intermediate devices or use of instrument instrumentation amplifiers so because the output itself is very high and sensitivity is very high also that is you can expect high sensitivities for lvdt up to 40 volt per millimeter that is if we have a 1 millimeter displacement you can get a voltage output of 40 volt that is relatively high volt then we have a rugged construction that is it is <clears throat> it is very insensitive to vibrations as well as shock and there is less friction because we don't have any sliding contacts like potentiometers okay then we have low hysteresis what is low hysteresis hysteresis itself the mean means that lag this uh, lvdt does not have any lag that is while we move towards the left suddenly the voltage magnitude changes to positive there is no lag there and when we move the arm towards the right we have negative voltage coming so there is again no lag that is uh, that is time taken to change from positive to negative or negative to positive there is no lag time so when the along with the displacement the voltage also changes that means it's, it is having lower hysteresis and one advantage is that it is having very low power consumption uh, less than one watt and then we have any anything will have its own disadvantages that is uh, large displacements are required for appreciable differential output what is large displacement see i told that one millimeter is required to change a voltage so you cannot use an lvdt for measuring very critical 
movements, very small, relatively very small movements, very critical movements, we cannot use NVDT. We can use NVDT 